Hi everyone. It is uh, July 25th and it's 5:34. We're if that is right. It's 5:30. 5:30. Good. <laughs> On the nose. Uh, so let's open the meeting with approval of the minutes, June 27th. So. Heather, you've got to second it. I'll second it. I was not here, but I did review them. Okay. To do that. Any any changes, corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Do we want to do introductions? Sure. I'm sorry. Of course we do. So joining us as our representatives from Total Management Solutions, TMS, Judy Hool, Dr. Judy Hool, and Mark Chapulis. Did I say that correctly? Chapulis. All right. Mark Chapulis. Do we have both of you now? We got yes. two? <laughs> wow. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you guys. Um, I think the, o the only adjustments to the agenda that I know of is I got a text from Humera today saying that she's having co some technical and delay difficulties in California, so will not be joining us to present the survey results. Do we have any other adjustments? Only that the school committee will be, if it so chooses, will be voting on the ATS handbook tonight. There's an additional revision that um, HA would like to make in its handbook, so you'll see that at your August meeting. Okay. And where do you want to do this? Should we just do this right now? You can do it however you would like. Um, what is that? Last month, the, we, we've never come back to pop open session and approve the Unit D contract. No, not no? Unit D, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the special. That's why I was so confused. I'm like, we didn't? Yeah. No, it's the special ed administrator contract. I don't have a final copy of the contract. Yes, you do. It's okay. right here. Why don't we do it later? I'll take a look. Do we this wanna? was there in, for the committee. There have been no changes aside from the recommendations that were made in the executive session mm -hmm. from uh, the committee. Do you want to pause and read, or? Mm. Okay. I meant, or do it later. <laughs> um, um. Is this um, document, this contract becomes public record? I yes. believe. Yes. yes. Yep. Do in there, that flashing? Do you see it flashing or saying it's recording? And if not, can you I thought you were record? trying to take over GCTV. <laughs> I mean, at Lake Community Access. It's okay. It was working a moment ago. I can try to press record from here. Is it recording? Let me see. It should be a flashing light. I'll try to press this from here. There it is. Perfect. There you go. Thank you. Wow. It's a fancy new one. Yeah, that's Because really... you may be surprised to hear that the cassettes are not always all that reliable. Mm. Uh, or, even or even available. Or even available. So this is to hopefully make my life a, a bit easier in terms of capturing the audio and the replay for the minutes. But it's so far right. away. Is it coming It's connected to, oh. to these microphones. All right. Correct. Good thinking. OK, with that um, interlude, now, do we want to, are you guys comfortable with approving this contract for the special education administrator? Yes. Motion to approve the uh, special education administrator contract of employment uh, for this coming school year. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you both. Now we have personnel report, I believe. 
and Amy Lanham, which I did bring this up last month, but she is our new English teacher. She will be uh, replacing Miss Bernier, and uh, we have some cafeteria openings currently that we've posted for, and we have been receiving resumes for. And as of this morning, we received an email from our school psychologist. She was able to secure a job in Connecticut where she lives, and so we will post for that. Bummer. Mm -hmm. She had let us know that the commute was a lot for her. It is. It, she spent way too much time in the car, so we appreciate her service to us. She did a wonderful job, and we did have a number of applicants when we posted last time, so we're confident that we'll be in good shape at the start of the year. Oh, okay. good. Jack's replacement? Jack's. No, Jack's yeah. replacement has already been hired. Right. This is a point eight position oh, okay. at um, Hadley Elementary School. All right, can you walk us through the handbook revisions? Certainly. So we, um, your handbook revisions, I'm going to focus on the HES revisions, Hadley Elementary School revisions, because as I said, you'll see the summary of changes to HA again in August, and there'll be one more added. Mm -hmm. For those of you who were able to look through perhaps the track changes that were sent under separate cover or review the HA changes, just know it's inserting language that describes the leveling of courses so that it matches with the Massachusetts Higher Education Commission, the description of leveling of courses and how GPA is calculated for class rank. But that will be presented along with all the HA changes in August. And you see there's a list of the summary of changes. The majority of those are things like typos, um, where um, there's some removal of information that we have in more than one place. If we have it on the district's website, if we have it in multiple places, we've removed some of that language. The goal was to make the handbook shorter mm -hmm. with the hopes that it would be easier for people to find information and that they would frankly be more likely to actually read it cover to cover because they've gotten quite long and, and sometimes the language is, as I said, it's redundant. We have this language in more than one place. So in most cases, we have simply removed program descriptions that we would have elsewhere. Language revisions have to do with grammar, aside from the removals, not substantive changes. Uh, things like recess rules, deleting number one through three, for example. Um, those are, do you want me to take you through every single page that you guys went through? I can do that. Um, but for example, one through three described teacher procedures, where the teacher should go for duty, things that would not necessarily be something a parent needed and just added unnecessary language to the handbook. But if the parent were interested in what the procedures were, they could get We absolutely that have them. We have them in the faculty handbook, need, right. absolutely. So right. we just tried to say, well, a parent probably doesn't need As a parent, where the staff needs to go, yeah. exactly. Um, but we have that in the faculty handbook. Makes sense. And the removal of the welcome letter isn't to be any less welcoming, but to be shorter? Yeah, precisely. Okay. Precisely. The question Just, the yeah. health services mission statement and mm -hmm. removing that, thinking about where else that might be communicated, is that something that. So we have it on, we keep it on the, the district website. Okay. Um, we did, the health services portion of both handbooks is still pretty dense. It's yeah. very specific. Again, trying to think about what parents want to know in terms of when should children be kept home from school? When can they anticipate the, that our school nurse would recommend that a child be sent home from school? Right. On certain physical conditions, how long does a child need to be out? And what are our processes for? Okay. And so that kind of information stayed in, and there's a lot of it. Yep. There's a lot of it. Any other questions on that? And you're hoping we'll vote this one pause, yes. pause on Hopkins. Correct. All right. You guys comfortable voting this? the changes to this one? AGS? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You make a motion to Thank you. accept <laughs> the changes to the Hadley Elementary School handbook for 2016-2017. I'll second your motion. Mm -hmm. you. OK. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> public comment period. You got anything for us? Nope. Okay. We are zipping right along to our new business managers. 
Welcome again. Because we can carry it over into 17? Right, yeah. Like all the talk and tuition yeah. and those kinds of things. So doing this with having the available funds means that you know we can easily absorb what we would have lost in that grant. So that works out well for us. So right now we're showing a positive balance of just under um, $5,000. Um, we're waiting for, obviously, invoices to come through. Sometimes we're too encumbered and what gets invoiced to you are two separate things. So that's a little bit of a cushion that we have um, to take uh, advantage of anything that might come in higher than we thought it was going to come in. And then obviously we do a request at the end um, to offload some expenses so that way um, it will be tipped into some of our revolving account. So we should help pretty well uh, as things are going. And uh, Mark was in on Saturday with uh, Chris doing some work, and uh, you know there were some invoices that we already know that that little push is going to be bitten away at a little bit. So uh, I think we're in a little good place moving forward into FY17 and getting this year tied up. So is there is there a time limit on how until those bills come in when they can no longer be counted towards FY16? Um, or because you've encumbered them, it's okay. If, from what I understand, in talking to Chris, if they're already encumbered, the town gives you the fiscal year of FY17, so until June 30th of next year, you huh. get those bills in, which experience is a generous amount of time. Hopefully, they'll be, they'll be long before then, but right. um, you know, the encumbrances that we have, mm -hmm. we have the fiscal year to receive and pay the bills. And pay the bills. Okay, thank so you. I, that last warrant today sure that everything that belongs to FY16 has now been in cover. And uh, so we'll just wait for the voices to come and see where it shakes out. I really couldn't, um, I, I couldn't figure out how to sign that one. It seemed, it came up on my screen in a different format, and I couldn't, I couldn't, it wouldn't. Well, I think, Linda, we were confused about when you were oh. leaving the country, so we CC'd you, but not made you a signature. Thank you. So. I'm like, why am I so dumb? Yeah. Why can I not figure this out? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and, I, you know, I know sometimes we have to nag you a little bit to get you to sign, but I just need to play on things that are time. We actually like, appreciate know. it. Thank well. you. <laughs> as long as you don't mind, it's all good. Um, the second item is the grants report, um, which I emailed out an update and also left the hard copies in on your spots because, again, the elves were busy on Saturday while I was not here, um, just tidying up the grants so the um, balances remaining are a little bit different. Um, the circuit breaker uh, amount remaining is obviously an amount that can be carried over because that's a revolving account that's not a grant per se. Everything else is down to zero with the exception of um, the essential school health services grant, which is actually a conglomeration of three grants. There's the main grant, and there's the mental health grant, and then that SPER uh, grant for substance abuse. So there's about $422 left that um, we don't have invoices for, so we're assuming we'll probably send that back to the state, and then we'll probably come back around to us. So. Madam Chair, can I ask a question? I'm a little naive about the budget, so but the circuit breaking, 
can you explain what it is and how it's used? Sure. It because is, it can be carried over. It's a, I don't understand what it is. It is a state fund for extraordinary special education costs. So the state will um, put together a formula that allows you to be able to offset some extraordinary costs, like out of district tuitions for kids who are very involved, um, or extraordinary expenses. And it fluctuates from year to year how much of a percentage of your budget you can actually attribute to separate regular. It's supposed to be at 75%. It's rare that it's at, at that height. I don't think you'll see 75%. Fiscal 17, so that's why it's always good to carry a little bit over. So if an unexpected out of district tuition shows up in the middle of the year that we haven't budgeted for, we have a place to be able to pay for it. So that would allow any new students coming into our district in that area mm -hmm. to cover their education and transportation costs. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. Can you also talk about, you mentioned the kindergarten grant, mm -hmm. that that is getting cut? Yes. So we shouldn't expect this $17,600 grant in the next fiscal year? That's correct. Okay. At all? At all. They cut, the uh, conference committee cut the kindergarten grant out of the state budget because of the shortfall that the state is in. So that was the program that was cut. Cut by House and Senate, not yes. by the governor. So uh, there's no... final budget also has it as a cut. Okay. He did not restore. Okay. Last but not least are the revolving accounts um, report. And uh, just a couple of things that may jump off the page at you probably around school lunch. On the most that in May it was in deficit, and now it is in positive. We had the ability to be able to take the director's salary and pay for it with local funds. So that eradicated any um, deficit that you had. Plus, it gives you a little cushion to get started because they always start the year, they have a very large order, and it's a while before revenues yes. come in to set things off. So this gives you a little bit of a cushion to get started. Um, and then the other one is the preschool revolving account. Uh, it's down significantly for May, and that is because of the final payrolls of FY16 and sort of that boom payment that takes care of the 26 pays. So that's why that goes up. Can I ask a question about that? Um, how does the Unit D contract impact the preschool revolving account? Does it? Mm -hmm. Because all expenses associated with pre-K are apportioned to the grant. And so that's all salaries that are associated with the program are apportioned to the revolving account. Space, so space rental, uh, portion of heat, I believe, electricity, mm -hmm. like so would be all, yes, okay. their salaries go to so preschool some of the revolving. impact that we saw with, with the unit D, what was settled in terms mm -hmm. of salaries, et cetera, maybe we may be seeing some of that. Yes, preschool revolving correct. Account. Yep. Okay, thank you. And it's better to charge that to a revolving account versus a grant because with state grants, if you charge a salary, they also assess you a 9% for the Massachusetts Teachers Retirement System. So unless we have to, we try to keep salaries out of the grants because that's nine extra percent that we can be using. Right. Okay, so the only exception we can with that is Title I because you sort of have to do that because they are going to And do we know anything else about the FY17 budget? Were there any other cuts? to schools that we should be concerned about? The um, conference committee level funded the charter school reimbursement um, to the FY16 levels, so there would be extra reimbursement coming to the town that you the town revenue, but obviously at the end of the day, it is yeah. all one big pot of money, so that's something we'll have to keep our eye on. I have not yet seen the charter sheet from the governor's version, I think, he vetoed some things that have gone back into the legislature, so we just have to wait for them to come. I think he vetoed $250 million and they overrode $100 million over the weekend and are done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but I didn't hear what happened with schools. Yeah, so it, once once all of that happens, then we'll see the final charge sheets come out and have a better idea of where we stand. Wow. You guys are done? We are. Thank you. Um, do you want to say anything about the survey? 
Uh, yes, they will be presenting the results in the August meeting, and before then, uh, will Humara and I subcommittee will review um, those results. I'm, I need to follow up with Humara as to involving um, our parent volunteers who agreed to be part of it and just make sure that we've got um, whatever representation there that we do. Uh, and we'll also make sure we've got a response rate information mm -hmm. like you had said, Annie. Mm -hmm. And thank you, policy committee. So busy. Oh, so busy. Um, okay. Yes. Um, the first policy is about alcohol, tobacco, and drug use. And what we suggested that we do is to adopt uh, the MASC suggestion with one uh, edit removing by students in the first paragraph instead of the two that we had before. Um, the MASC policy is just more specific. And OK. Can I ask a question about that? Sure. So by removing the by students, which I agree with the premise mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. it, can we really as a school committee prohibit the use of by anybody at um, on school property or, or school function? Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we aren't overextending our, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. our power. <laughs> okay. And the reason um, that's come up is that we have had um, the parents at times request having alcohol served at fundraisers, yep. and we've never allowed that. Right. So that's why we took out the students, because okay. unless we were going to change that policy, yep. mm -hmm. it wasn't clear. Great. Uh, the second one is about uh, food service account management. And we looked at several different models, I believe. We mm -hmm. cribbed this mostly from Norwell. Is that's that correct. Right? Yep. <laughs> and, uh, uh, added some things, took out some things. So a lot of programs, um, a lot of districts uh, do a lot more threatening about collection yep. agencies, <laughs> um, which we chose not to do. Uh, we don't seem to have that kind of problem. But we did um, say that if things, if a balance exceeds a certain amount, that the student can be denied participation in certain extracurricular type activities. I thought this seemed like a fair way to address this issue right in and, general. and we did make sure that there was debt forgiveness for situations that may come up yep right that need to be addressed individually at the discretion of the administration can I ask a couple of questions mm -hmm. number one I the full pay students I think if we stop the sentence at students at all grade levels will pay for meals at the district's published standard rate period mm -hmm. because you can pay in oh, advance right, right. later yeah. on in the mm -hmm. policy and so yeah. I found that confusing okay. and then I didn't I don't I didn't quite get why we oh I'm sorry I need to be clear standard rate period you're not eliminating all the rest it's just no just, okay. it's just uh, uh, each day because you can okay. pay in advance okay. but the full pay students yeah they can't charge a la carte items once they have a negative balance. That's right. The free meal has to prepay the a la carte items, and the reduced meal isn't allowed to charge. Once they have a negative balance. Which You're seems right. like that's kind of three different scenarios, and it seems right. like that's, a, that's more work than our staff need to do. And can we try to try to make those the same somehow? Um, yeah, I think I, I think the prepaid is the issue on the free meal benefit because certainly if they want to pay at time of purchase, they are allowed to do so. So mm -hmm. that needs to be amended to reflect that. You're right. Thank you. These are for a la carte purchases, like beyond just the lunch. Yeah. Do we still add a minute? Yes. Saying? Correct. I don't yeah. I don't, <laughs> yeah. No. I don't need you. So it's been a while. So can I? Um, just to make the language the same, the student will not be allowed to charge a la carte items once they have a negative balance on yeah. their account. For all three of them? Yeah, yeah that, that to me seems yeah. fair, clear, and no one has to figure out who is this. But I, don't, I, I think for the free meal benefit, they don't have an account, right? And it wouldn't have a negative balance? Yeah. Is that the issue? Um, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's why maybe it was different, is that a la carte purchases may be paid for at the time right. that they could pay for it. But I don't think if you just, I think if you just change it to a student will not be allowed to charge all the items once they have, oh, I guess, yeah, you're right. Oh. So there's nothing. There's, they're not going to have a They wouldn't balance. need one, but there's nothing to preclude them. To have a prepaid. 
having no, some yeah. sort of pre paid account for things like a la carte. So there, right. yep. There's nothing that says you can't have that. Right. It's just that, that's, to your point, that's probably the logic that informed it. It would be less likely right. that if someone were on a fully, completely subsidized lunch program that they would have any sort of account. But right. it could be. Could. You could do both. You could be eligible for a subsidized lunch program and still have an account yeah. where you Somebody wanted to get ice cream or whatever that was. So we can make it the same. Okay, good. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. Thank you for doing this and being. She misses. I know. That's <laughs> honestly. It was hard for me when I saw that the policy committee was so busy without me. <laughs> you were longing for the days. <laughs> that was all I had. And the third one um, is about replenishment of student activity funds, and I believe that the changes here are at the request of the DOR, the Department of Revenue. Um, is that right? Our, our auditor. To yeah, align okay. with Desi, okay. and Desi. another right. set of uh, right. letters. Can you explain okay. it to me? I, I struggled with why why these were important changes. So um, I you can't find can a diplomatic you? way to say <laughs> I, I can't tell you why they're important to the auditor or the department for that okay. matter. I can explain to you in some cases, um, for example, student activity checking account, uh, where it says a student account activity account administrator will submit a voucher um, what accurately happens and they wanted it to be our accurate process we request to the treasurer and the treasurer submits the voucher so D doesn't right. submit the, the voucher the treasurer submits the voucher they want it to be accurate okay um, and um, balance of the checking account at the time the advance amount requested that was obviously not meant to be struck and then uh, yep I got that one um, it was uh, again, a strike. Some of these are just cleaning up language or typo taken exactly as it is written in uh, the DESI model. Principal or designee on large expenditures. Um, and so the again, five the years, designee. The, I'm sorry, the five yeah. years to three years, that's a DESI yeah. thing? Yeah, we didn't change okay. times unless they told us to. Okay. And Heather just alerted me that we have a typo on the spelling of treasurer under student activity checking accounts. Oh, thank you. There's another R. Where am I? Yes, it does. Perfect. Tree sewer. Tree sewer. <laughs> so this, you, these first are all reading. presented, yes, for first reading. Yep. Okay. Anything else? So we'll bring them back to August for Correct. Uh, approval? Okay. That's it. Um, Tri-Board. Tri-Board met, I don't know when it met. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. We presented our five-year prioritized capital plan and our five-year budget projection. Oh, I meant to bring the list of questions that they had. The Finance Committee had some questions. Number one is, number one was whether the um, computer and technology requests included whatever Helping Hearts and the trustees gave, um, gave to the schools. It was right. That would be said no, that we, yeah. Well, that's what uh, that was basically our answer. But okay. we needed, uh, but we probably. Yes. And yeah. that, that's correct. I think <laughs> unless the school committee directed me us otherwise, we they're not obligated to give us that exactly. money. Exactly. They can do whatever they would like with it. Right. And they may choose a different priority exactly. in another year. Right. I'm sorry. I have those questions at home. I will do it unless you remember I them. I didn't bring them. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, and I don't exactly know what the next step is, except that the tri board is meeting again on August 10th. What's the next step, Heather? Meet August 10th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we'll see so where I think, that. I mean, I think we walked through. You walked through the five-year projections. You walked through the kind of trend analysis, if you will, that informed how we got to those projections and the approach that was taken in terms of um, grants that we knew weren't you couldn't count on them being the same amount uh, in terms of increases and, and salary you know contractual increases we knew were coming so I felt like it was um, 
that a lot of that meeting was explaining the rationale yeah. behind those numbers and what went into them. So August tenth. We'll going. see where, go, where we go from there. Sure. Yep. May I add to that? Sure. Try yeah. board a little bit. I think what we're doing right now is, as a board, we're trying to set our priorities. We got priorities from the municipal building committee, and now we're looking at their priorities to set our priorities and how they're going to fall in the positions at this time. I really can't tell you because revenues are really changing in our community right now that we're getting in. But I think something for the school committee to think about, I consider you falling pretty high up on the priority list. And maybe uh, thinking about if we enter into an override um, dollar figure that you would introduce as a school committee possibly, we may need that figure in the overall large picture when we do it. We're working with the treasurer right now to find out how much money is coming off of our debt, which is a yep. big factor, and additional revenues that we can plug in by borrowing. It's an ideal time for us to borrow now. And uh, so I think we're going to need a figure from the school committee fairly soon, not the 10th, but soon after that, before we go to fall town meetings, if right. we go that way. Thank you. I think the other ask was to think about how we can be sure before, if we go that route, before the meeting, that we have the messaging and the information down for those pre-meeting sessions, forums, to be able to communicate right. out, okay, if the school, if the schools are asking for this, what is it for, how is it used, why is it needed, and just making sure it's understood. Right. Um, so that, that was an ask of us in, when we presented the five-year capital uh, priorities and timeline. And I think the other thing that's going to have to come up for discussion is we're going to choose to do a menu type thing. You know, everybody puts in and it'll be a menu or we go for one complete override vote on everything. So that'll be up for discussion, I think, in our next tribe board meeting too. I don't think we will have our members by August 10th. I think it would be good to have all five of us as part of that discussion, but maybe we could try to get that done at our August meeting so that we're ready for the next tri-board meeting. That would be good. Was there an issue with timing with the CPA meeting? Was that um, came up? Well, the, we have submitted the CPA request so that it's mm -hmm. in town hall ready for the CPA meeting mm -hmm. on I believe September 12th. I did send an email to David's asking that when, if the warrant is closing on August, maybe you know this, if the warrant's closing on August 31st, but the CPA committee isn't meeting until September 12th, how do we? Yeah, then we need, yeah, so I asked David how we do that. Yeah. And he yeah. said he's got it on his list of things to do. Okay. So. Okay. I think the select board is looking at a way to stop the in-house fighting by all these departments. You may not get it in 217, but you're on the docket in the five-year plan for 219 to put a shovel in the ground for different projects. So we're trying to pull that all together, and it's not easy to do, but we're trying to piece everybody in. You know, stop. everyone's looking for new buildings. I want mine. I want mine at the same time and there may be some sharing in buildings we don't know but yeah. you know there's a lot of factors going into this for the big picture to yep. make it work for everyone and that's what we're trying to do right now so you assume that you will be on the september 12th agenda yes it is our hope it is our ex expectation yes. because we've beat the deadline this time <laughs> Um, the other deadline we beat is that because we had the five-year prioritized capital plan, mm -hmm. that is now ready to go to the capital planning committee. Mm -hmm. And the only other thing we needed to do was do a brief uh, paragraph description of what the projects are and why we are asking for them. Mm -hmm. I drafted that and sent that to David today. I forgot to forward it to you guys. I'll do that when I get home. Mm -hmm. But it's very... Right. Short paragraph saying, "Here's why we need the, why we're requesting these projects right. okay. in 2017." What did I miss on that? Anything? That's it. Um, oh, except that Annie talked to the building inspector today. One of the today, mm -hmm. recently, today. Um, 
one of our projects is the air conditioning at the elementary school and I did ask Annie I I didn't know if the elementary school was built to put in in a way that we could put central air in mm -hmm. that's and that's what the building inspector said that for it cost efficiency and energy efficiency mini splits is better so no, no I don't know what that is, but um, uh, it's well. Those are kind of like they hang on the wall, mm -hmm. and they heat and cool, and you know, get it by. And there, there's a, something outside, right outside, and then there's a, so it's limited to yeah. work. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's much cheaper. So I just, I just, I think did both the tri board and the capital mm -hmm. update yes. together. Cool. Well done. And Thank I you. will reiterate, they have David Nixon has a copy of your CPA request. I mailed one to the home of Edwin Matusko. I placed one in Mr. Matusko's mailbox and I emailed it. So they have it. We will not <laughs> miss the deadline this time. Good. Roby, yes. right, tell us what's happening. Well, uh, let's see. The, um, the collaborative at our last, our final meeting of the school year had a presentation from Save Our Public Schools. Um, there's a lot of interest among school districts and the referendum that's coming on about lifting the cap on charter schools. Um, and so we had a woman come. Uh, many school committees have made have voted to have resolutions against lifting the cap. I don't know if that's something that this school committee is interested in doing. Um, they have sample ones if you are. Um, but Didn't we have something previously come in front of us about this? No, I think it was testing. I don't think so it was testing from we also the, have the um, charter teacher. school. Did we? Or maybe you shared, yeah. The, you're thinking of the the editorials? Do you remember the opinion uh, pages? Oh, right, 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 right. There was debate right, about right. that. And right. some school committees did take a position all around that time period and signed on to a letter. Right. Right. And this is different. That's Would you send us a, could you have that yeah. electronically, the resolution, so we can review I, it? I'll, I'll scan it and send it to okay. you. Okay, yeah. that'd be good. Um, but related to that um, is also the uh, what, what you got in your packet is the collaborative has been doing work on surveying people about how they feel about public schools, the pluses and minuses of public schools, and they have created a social media campaign about Western Mass public schools. Um, and I don't know what are the superintendents. This is just kind of out there. Yes. We've said it's lovely. It's great. We're happy. We're appreciative of CES and what Bill is doing, what Mr. Deal is doing, Dr. Deal is doing to um, support this effort mm -hmm. and to give public schools the positive press that he and we believe public schools deserve. So it's, it's, a, it's on Twitter, it's on Facebook, it's also... We don't need to yeah. do anything specifically. No, we don't, except that when they, when they were researching all of this, they, they researched the districts, various districts, uh, social media outreach mm -hmm. efforts themselves, and found out um, how many unofficial pages are out there, and Hadley has them. And basically yes, Facebook collects, uh, if there's activity on people's pages about a certain topic, uh, well, an organization, They'll collect them and they'll create an unofficial page. And sort of in little print at the top, it says unofficial page. But and Facebook created it. Yeah, Facebook created it. And so they just continue to add to it. I had no and idea that that was true. Most people in the room didn't. Um, but it was suggested that if you are an official of the organization, you can claim that page and take it over and be in control of what is posted there and is not posted. And so I had my daughter look. And there's one for the Hadley administration, and there's one for Hopkins, and there's one for HES. I did not see anything terrible there, but... Thank you for saying that. <laughs> and I did send that to Mike, and I'll, I'm glad you brought this up tonight, because I'll follow up with, we'll be claiming those. And as you yeah. know, I'm not a fan of that right. type of outlet, because we don't have the capacity to manage it, but we'll certainly claim it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> It seems very strange to me, but I appreciate yeah, you bringing does. that to... I never would have known that. No. Ever. No. Yeah. And there's something rather creepy about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the other thing is, I don't know how familiar people in the room, aside from our uh, superintendent folks, are with Mount Tom Academy, but there was a chance that that was going to disappear that mm -hmm. next year. That's an alternative program. Mm -hmm. um, and they... Um, that's run by CES? That's mm -hmm. run by CES, and it was located at... Um, Somewhere near Mount Tom? 
uh, 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 college. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, it looked like they weren't going to have room for it, and there was all sorts of, but it is going to exist next year oh, good. to fund it. Um, good. And they were going to be looking at ways to make it, to expand the program and make it uh, more accessible good. Um, to more students. That's a really good program. That's good to hear. So, and that's all. So I will send okay. you the. So that's another thing for uh, for August is potentially the resolution. Mm -hmm. It's a busy. It's a busy meeting. It is. Um. Linda. Yep. Can we circle back? We we've been talking about the CPA meeting and the timing of that versus uh, the tri board, but I don't think we discussed, and maybe it's just for public, what what the connection is that the CPA meeting is in support of the fields, um, athletic fields activity, which has been a priority for um, our five-year capital planning budget in terms of part of that being undertaken in the next year. And right. so their support and their funding towards that, if that's possible, of what we've applied for will help to offset the costs of that project. And that's why we're trying to take that into account in our future budgeting and planning for that it, it, for the capital projects right but it's not a tribal issue no but i think it would change our it we have it in our five-year capital right. plan yes. as of yes. as an right. fy 17 right. priority and i right. think right. it would if cpa if we are denied cpa it right. would right. it would move off of the fy 17 priority right yeah. have we just done it yes but that, it is not our fastest meeting ever, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. So let's, here's how we'll lengthen the meeting. We already know that um, I need to bring my son back to college, so we'll be not be here for the August 22nd meeting, nor will Heather. I don't know about Paul or Humera. How about you? As far as I know, but can we move it to the 29th? That's still within the month. Can we move yes. it to the 29th for you? That works for that works for me. That works for me. And I'm sure it does. I'm, I'm actually, I'm not checking if I will be here. It's the first day the teachers are back. I'm thinking I'll be around, but uh, it's Probably. Just, yeah, just making <laughs> sure there's nothing else scheduled for students. Oh, come on. I would suggest would it help to start, start later, or is 5.30 still? I'm hoping that that's fine, but. Her phone is slow. For whatever reason, the calendar won't that's come okay. up. So uh, let's assume that that's okay. So let's say August 20, we're moving from August 22nd to August 29th. We assume it's here, and we assume it's at 530. Yeah. But we'll let you yeah. confirm location. Oh, she just got it. All good? Yes, perfect. So 5.30, okay. 8.29, perfect. And on that agenda, we now have your evaluation, the CES resolution, the mm -hmm. survey. Yeah. Are we ever going to, will we be hearing from um, HEA about the testing resolution? You, you also yeah, so possibly have spiffy. You have a, there's a long list. I don't think all of it will and the make it. Handbook. So we'll we'll prioritize. We may need to list. buy dinner. Yeah. Policy. <laughs> second reading. Oh, second reading of policy. Do you have any mm -hmm. more policies that you guys are reviewing? No. Okay. Let's <laughs> check. No. So, so we, may need to, <laughs> we may need to prioritize. Unlike some tonight, of those it will be a long meeting. And we have for it next time. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 All right, efficiently and effectively done, folks. Motion to adjourn. Yes, okay. motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. They all did it. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.